Hello, my name is Maria Colgan, and I'm excited to talk to you today about how you can harness the power of Oracle Optimizer Hints to improve your query performance. Let's head over to the presentation now. Before we begin, I do want to set your expectations correctly. Attending this session isn't instantly going to make you an optimizer hinting expert. And adding hints to every SQL statement you encounter won't automatically improve the performance for everything. In fact, I recommend that you use hints only as a last resort after you've exhausted all other tuning techniques and tools, things like gathering an accurate set of statistics, using the SQL Tune Advisor, or using SQL Plan Management. Really, hints should be your last resort. With that said, let's dive in and find out what hints actually are. And a hint is a directive that you give the optimizer. That directive will always be followed as long as it's applicable. So what does that actually mean? Well, imagine we've got a SQL statement where we need to access data from table A. If I supply a hint to the optimizer that says I want a full table scan of table A, the optimizer will always obey that hint and it will always access table A for this particular query using a full table scan. But if I have a query that's got a non-equality join predicate in it, and then I ask Oracle to do a hash join, that hint is not applicable. Why? Because you can only do a hash join when you've got an equality predicate. And so therefore that hint is not applicable. And it's situations like that that lead people to say, hey, my hint was ignored or my hint wasn't used. Now, hints weren't actually introduced as a tuning technique. They were actually introduced as a testing tool. Back when we introduced the cost-based optimizer in eight, Oracle needed a way to be able to test all the possible plans the cost-based optimizer could come up with. And so we introduced the, the hint infrastructure. Now the optimizer isn't the only aspect of the Oracle database to use that infrastructure. In fact, several other aspects of the database leverage hints. One good example of this is direct path load operations. You can add an append hint to your insert statement that tells Oracle to bypass the buffer cache and write that data directly to storage. You can also use a cache hint to tell Oracle what information you want stored in the buffer cache in main memory. But probably some of the most useful non-optimizer hints are the ones that share information about what happens when a SQL statement is being executed. Let me show you what I mean by that. If I add the gather plan statistics hint to a SQL statement, what I'm actually asking Oracle to do is capture the execution statistics for that SQL statement and store them in the cursor cache inside in the shared pool. I can then view those stats as part of the execution plan by adding an additional format parameter to my DBMS X plan display cursor command. The format parameter is all stats last. That means I want to see all the execution stats for the last execution of this SQL statement. What that'll do is add additional columns to the execution plan table that give me those execution statistics. The two most popular or most useful columns that get added are the E rows and A rows column. The E rows column are going to show you the estimated number of rows the optimizer believed would come back from each operation in the plan. That's often referred to as the cardinality estimate. Next to that is the A rows column. What that'll show you is the actual number of rows we saw for each operation in that plan while the SQL statement was executing. By having those two columns right next to each other in the table, you can quickly compare whether the optimizer made a good cardinality estimate or not. And after all, a misestimate in the cardinality estimations is probably the leading cause of a per plan choice or, a pure, or performance problems. So being able to quickly identify that in the execution plan table is a great way to begin tuning your queries. But we're not here to talk about just any hints. In this session, we want to focus on optimizer hints. So let's look at that in more detail. You can use hints to influence every decision the optimizer makes. So whenever it has to choose between more than one option, you can tell Oracle exactly which choice to make. And you can do that for every aspect of the optimizer. 
So let's start at the beginning at what the first thing the optimizer does when you issue a SQL statement. And what it's going to do is it's going to transform or rewrite that SQL statement with the goal of opening up additional access or join methods or even join orders. Now, some of these transformations are always done because they're heuristic based. They're based on the shape of your query. But the majority of these are cost based transformations. These are transformations that the optimizer will transform the query, cost the plan that way, and then cost the plan, uh, plan for the query when it's not transformed and pick the plan with the lowest cost. Now, I've listed there on the slide several of the most popular transformation hints that we have. Probably the most common one used is the merge hint. What that tells the optimizer to do is take the definition of a view that's used in the query and insert that full definition or query into the outer query and optimize it as a whole. Instead of doing that, the alternative would be to execute the query, that is the view definition, get a result set, and then join that result set to the other tables in the outer query. So again, that's an example of the merge hint. I've listed some of the other common ones there on the slide, but we'll look at some of these in more detail later in the presentation. Once the optimizer has transformed your query any way it can, it moves on to determine the actual execution plan. And you can use hints to influence all aspects of the plan from the original cardinality estimates using hints like dynamic sampling or the cardinality hint, then the access methods, the join methods, and even the join order can all be influenced using hints. And what you may not realize is you can also use hints to tell the optimizer what not to do. Each of the hints that we have there has a corresponding negative hint, which is this uh, proceeded with the word no and an underscore. So, so hints are classified into four categories based on the scope of those hints. The first category are the single table hints. These are hints that you specify on just one table or view, things like the full hint, index hints, and you may be surprised to see the use NL hint is in this category. That's the use nested loops hint. And although it is a hint that influences the join, you're only allowed to specify that hint on one table, the table that you want on the right-hand side of the join, often known as the inner table. The second category are multi-table hints. These are hints that will be specified on multiple tables, things like the use, nest, or use hash join hint, the leading hint, and the order hint. The third category are query block hints hints that operate on a single query block. Now, if you're not familiar with that term query block, what it basically is, is a unit of SQL. So if I have a query that contains a subquery or an inline view, that subquery and inline view are treated as separate query blocks to the outer query. The fourth and final uh, category we have are statement level hints. These are hints that are used for the entire SQL statement and are typically used to control things like the optimizer mode or what optimizer features will be enabled for that particular query. So now that we have an understanding of what hints are, let's move on and talk about how to use or implement those hints. When you want to add a hint to a SQL statement, it needs to be inserted immediately after the keyword in that SQL statement. So after the select insert update command, and it's inserted into the query in the form of a comment, but it is a very special comment because we do add an additional plus sign at the leading edge of that comment to alert the optimizer that the contents here are important, that it is actually a hint. Now, just to be clear, in case you get confused by the example I have on the slide, the first one is a comment. The second one is the correct syntax for a hint. But because the content inside of that hint is not legitimate hints, it will be parsed and then treated as a comment by the optimizer when it realizes I haven't specified too many comments mixed in there with the hints. As the optimizer begins to parse that block, it may not be able to discern all of your hints and it may treat them as comments. So the best practice really is to 
Repeat the hints immediately after the keyword where they belong, but add your comments somewhere else in that SQL statement. After all, they can go anywhere, including right at the very end of the SQL statement. Now, when it comes to specifying hints, you need to make sure that both the hint is spelled correctly and you reference the objects you want that hint to operate on correctly. That means if you use table aliases in your from clause, you also need to use those same aliases in the hints themselves. So in our example here, the emp table is using an alias E in the from clause. That means when I specify my index hint, I need to specify it on E and not on emp. Otherwise, the optimizer won't know what object I'm referencing in that hint. And again, the hint won't be used. Let's look at a more complicated query now, one where I'm doing a two table join. And ideally what I want here is two full table scans, one of the employees table, one of the departments table, and then a hash join. That's the plan I'm after. So I've added two hints to the query immediately after the keyword, and I've used the table aliases as I've specified those hints. So let's see what kind of plan we get for this SQL statement. Well, as you can see, I got the full table scan I wanted on the employees table. I also got the hash join I was after, but I didn't get the table full table scan of the department table. I ended up getting an index access. So why wasn't my full hint on the department's table used in this case? Why wasn't it applicable? The reason it's not applicable is I put the hint in the wrong query block. If you look in the from clause of the query, there, you'll notice that the department table does not appear in the outer queries from clause. The department's table only appears in the subquery, and therefore I should have put the full hint into that query block in order for it to be used. And if I do that now, move that full hint on the department table down into the subquery, I immediately get the plan that I want. Because remember, most hints are only applicable to the query block in which they reside. Now, if you do want to specify all the hints up front, you can do that, but you need to tell the optimizer which query block that hint belongs to. Now, Oracle automatically names all of the query blocks in your SQL statements, and they follow a pretty common naming convention. So for example, if I've got a select query, it'll be called cell and then dollar one, two, three, and so on for each of the query blocks within that SQL statement. And so by referencing those query block names, we can specify all of the hints in the outer query. But how do you know exactly what the query block names are if they're automatically generated? Well, you can have Oracle show you the query block names when you display the execution plan by passing an additional format parameter to your DBMS X plan procedure calls. Let me show you what that looks like. In this example, I've added an additional format parameter called plus alias to my DBMS X plan display cursor command. And what that'll do is it'll create a new section underneath the plan table called query block name slash object aliases. And inside of there, we'll see exactly what query block names we had for our query and what table aliases were used in each. So you'll see there that the table alias E for employees belongs to query block cell $1, while D for department belongs to cell $2, or the subquery. And so by specifying the location of where the hint is applicable to with the query block name there, I can specify all of the hints in the outer query. Now, if you don't want to use Oracle's names for these different query blocks, you can actually leverage an additional hint called QB name to name each of the blocks yourself. So in this example, I've added the QB name hint to the subquery. I've named that subquery my sub Q, and then I can use that query block name when I specify all the hints in the outer query. So I do my full on hint on the department's table using the my sub q query block name. Now, the most important question that most people ask when it comes to hints is, why wasn't my hint used? And there's really two ways to find out what's happened to your hints. Prior to 19C, 
your only option was to look in the optimizer trace or the 10053 trace file and search for the dump hints section in that trace file. But starting from 19C onwards, we have a much easier way to find out what's happening with our hints. We can look at the hint report that appears below the execution plan, and it will give us guidance on whether or not our hint was used, whether there was a syntax error with it, whatever the case may be. So let's take a look at both of these in action. We're using that same query we just looked at, but now I've made a deliberate syntax error in the hints. And what I've done here is I've got a full hint that's missing the extra L in the word full. If I'm prior to 19C, what I'll end up having to do is look in the optimizer trace. Inside of there, I'll do a grep on that file for dumping hints. And what that'll do is bring up the section that should have an entry for each hint that was used in my SQL statement. But what we notice here is I only have one entry in that section. I have the entry for the first hint in the outer query, the full on employees. We see there that it was used, it was resolved successfully, which is what resolved equals one means, and it was used. What I don't see is any entry for my second hint on the departments table. And that's because of the syntax error, and it was used as a comment instead of a hint. But it really doesn't tell me that. Things are a lot better if we go ahead and look in 19C. With 19C, if I get the execution plan for my SQL statement with the deliberate syntax error in it, the hint report underneath the execution plan shows me that I did indeed get a syntax error in one of the hints used in this query, and that error occurred in the query block, select uh, two, and the error was on the full hint because I didn't spell it correctly. So a lot more information in the hint report in 19C. Let's look at a different query now. Let's move on and instead of being access methods, look at join methods. Here I'm asking Oracle to do a nested loops join between the customers and the sales table. And I've specified the use NL hint and I'm using the correct table alias for the sales table. Let's take a look at the plan and see whether I got the nested loops join that I was after. Unfortunately, I didn't. The default plan for my query was a hash join, two full table scans on sales and customers followed by a hash join. So why wasn't my nested loops hint used? If we look at the hint report underneath the plan, we'll see there that my hint was unused. You'll see uh, use NLS was unused. But why? Why wasn't it used? Well, remember, the use NL hint allows you to specify which table should be on the right hand side of the join. And in our case, I had asked for the sales table to be on the right hand side of the join. But if we look at the execution plan there on the slide, what we see is that the sales table is appearing on the left hand side of the join and the customer's table is actually on the right hand side. So my hint is not applicable for this particular join order that the optimizer chose. So how do I get the optimizer to do the nested loops join that I want? Well, the only way I can do that is by telling the optimizer both the join order I want and the join method that I want. And I can do that by adding an additional hint to the query. I can add the leading hint as well as the use NL hint to tell the optimizer the join order and then the join type that I want. And in, there you go. By using that combination of hints, I get the nested loop join that I was expecting with the sales table on the right hand side of the join. So as you can see, when you're using hints, if you want to get the exact plan you're after, you may actually have to use multiple hints in order to influence all the different decisions the optimizer needs to make in order to come up with that plan. In fact, the only way you can guarantee the same execution plan every time is if you give us a full set of hints for every decision the optimizer has to make. And we actually have a name for that. We call it the outline for that plan. 
Now, if you're looking for one, the outline for a plan, you can actually get Oracle to share it with you or show it to you as part of your DBMS X plan display cursor calls. You're going to use an additional format parameter called plus outline. And when you generate a plan using that format parameter, you'll actually get the full set of hints that you need to reproduce the plan. And as you can see there, it's a rather long list, even for my very, very simple execution plan of just a full table scan of employees. I'm going to need to cut and paste that whole set of hints into my basic SQL statement in order to reproduce that plan. Seems a little bit complicated, and it is. So you are probably better off using something like SQL plan management to give you plan stability rather than lifting out that full outline of hints into your SQL statement. Using SQL plan management, a free tool, you'll actually be able to have the Oracle automatically capture that outline for you, store it in the database, and then use it each time you need it for that particular query. So now that we understand how to use hints and what they are, I want to move on and talk about some of the useful hints you have at your disposal, specifically the ones that allow you to control the optimizer mode and help you fix problems at the scope of which that problem occurs. So let's look at the optimizer modes first. The Oracle optimizer has three modes. All rows, which is the default mode, that is the situation where the optimizer is going to optimize your queries or choose an execution plan that's going to return all the rows for that query in the most optimal way. The second option you have is to run the optimizer in first rows N mode. What that means is you tell the optimizer, I'm only interested in returning the first N rows for this query. And I want you to optimize the execution plan just to return those first N rows. Even if it's not the best plan to return all the rows, optimize for just that first N. The third and final mode is the rule-based optimizer. Now, I'm sure if you're using Oracle for any length of time, you're well aware that the rule-based optimizer is not only deprecated, but it's no longer supported but it is there for backward compatibility. And I will talk about it in just a second if you do intend to use the rule hint. But since we're all pretty familiar of what the all rows mode looks like, let's take a deeper look at the first rows N hint and why we might want to use it. Imagine we've been asked to retrieve information about the employees we have in department ID 50. Well, it turns out that the majority of are the employees in the company, 45% of them, are actually in department 50. And so the optimizer in the default mode or all rows mode picks a full table scan in order to retrieve 45% of the rows in that table. But this query is only used in a dashboard, and that dashboard just displays the first 10 employees from that department. And so because we only want the first 10 rows, we can ask Oracle to optimize the query to get those first 10 rows as fast as possible. And we do that by adding the first rows 10 hint to the SQL statement. That, as I said, will get the optimizer to pull out an execution plan that'll just get those first 10 rows as fast as possible. And so we switch from a full table scan to an index range scan in this case. So let's move on now to the rule hint, to use the rule-based optimizer. As I said, this is no longer supported, but there is a hint that will allow you to revert back to that rule-based optimizer and have the optimizer use a very specific small set of rules to optimize your SQL statement. But there are a couple of things you need to be aware of if you try this mode. For starters, the rule-based optimizer does not understand hints. So if you use the rule hint, it can be the only hint you specify in the SQL statement. Otherwise, we will have to revert back to the cost-based optimizer, and uh, you won't get the behavior that you're after. On top of that, the rule-based optimizer has not actually been updated since Oracle 7.3. So the queries that you're using with the rule-based optimizer can't leverage any of the functionality that came to inside the Oracle database after 7.3. So for example, you can't use partition tables in the query. You can't use IOTs. You can't use parallel execution or flashback query or any of those types of uh, features or functionality 
that came since 7.3. So as I said, not really a terribly useful hint, but certainly one you do see, especially in legacy code. A much more practical hint that you can use in a lot more cases is the opt param hint. This allows you to specify the value or change the value for an optimizer parameter just for a single SQL statement. And this is an incredibly useful um, hint to have in your arsenal so that if you do run into a problem and you want to enable or disable some fee optimizer feature, but just for an individual SQL statement, you can use this hint rather than disabling that feature for the entire system. Now you can see there's a long list of optimizer hints or parameters that you can use with this hint, but one of the most popular optimizer parameters isn't actually on the list, and that's optimizer feature enable. And the reason for that is that it has its very own hint. The optimizer features enable hint allows you to revert the optimizer back to a previous release of the database for just one specific SQL statement. And this can be an incredibly useful tool for you if you're currently upgrading from an older version of the database to 19C, and if you encounter any performance regressions as part of that upgrade. Instead of reverting the optimizer back to an older version for the entire database, uh, preventing you from getting any benefit from the new features and capabilities uh, for all your SQL statements, what we can do is we can revert the optimizer back to the previous version that you came from for just the SQL statement that encounters that regression. So making it a very useful hint to have again in your arsenal. But before we wrap up today, I thought it would be good to focus on answering that query that is most commonly asked when it comes to optimizer hints. Why was my optimizer hint ignored? And I thought rather than giving you a whole bunch of reasons for this, it'd be more fun if we did it as a quiz. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at several examples now. I'm gonna ask you what you think is the problem before we dive in and give you the solution. So in the first query that we're interested in, we're looking to use the primary key index on the employees table. So take a look at the three options I've given you there. Which one of the following statements will actually trigger Oracle to use the primary key index called pkey underscore emp on the employees table? Turns out it's option number three. Remember, you need to spell the hint correctly, and that's the full spelling of index for the index hint. You need to use the correct table alias, in this case, E, and you need to spell the name of the index correctly as well in order to make sure that the hint is applicable. So that was a good, easy one to start with. Let's take a look at a slightly more complicated case. So in this case, I, again, I'm using the hint index. I've, spe I've specified it correctly. I've used the alias for the promotions table there, but I didn't get a index access. I still got a full table scan. Let's take a look at the hint report to get a better insight in what's going on. If we look in the hint report, it, there, it says there that there was a hint specified in the statement, but it's unresolved. So why was my hint unresolved? Well, it's unresolved or not applicable because there are no indexes created on the promotions table. That's why we don't have the index plan we were hoping for. Let's take a look at another one. In this case, I'm asking for a hash join between the employees table and the salary grades table. Again, I'm using the correct table aliases. I'm specifying the hint in the correct place immediately after the keyword. But when we look at the execution plan there, I get a nested loops join. Again, let's see what the hint report shares with us. It shares there that, again, I have an unused hint, an unused hint between use hash on E and S. So why is it not being used? Well, it turns out, if you recall, right at the beginning, I told you, you can't use a hash join unless you have an equality join predicate in your query. And in our query here, I'm using a between clause as my join predicate. So it's not applicable to use a hash join in this case. Let's take a look at a, one more example before we wrap up the session. In this case, I'm asking Oracle to use an index access on the employees table, and I'm asking for it to be used on a very specific index. 
And I also want that access to be done in parallel. If we look at the execution plan, the good news is I did get an index range scan on the index that I was after, but it doesn't appear to execute in parallel. I'm missing those keywords PX in the plan. So why did it not execute in parallel? If I look in the hint report underneath the execution plan there, we see indeed my parallel hint was unused. And the question is why? And the reason is I've asked Oracle to do something that's not applicable. I can't do a parallel index range scan on a non-partitioned index. And in this case, our employees table is not partitioned and therefore I can't do an index range scan in parallel in that case. So it's an invalid combination of hints that I was asking the optimizer for. The optimizer did the first hint I asked for, the first directive to do the index range scan, but then the parallel directive was no longer applicable. So let's wrap up now and let me share three key takeaways I want you to take with you and apply after this session. First and foremost, please only use optimizer hints with extreme caution and only when you know exactly what that hint is going to do and why you need it. I also want you to remember that if you're looking to guarantee the same plan every time, you're going to need to specify the full outline of hints for that SQL statement. And the easiest way to do that is to leverage the free tool, SQL Plan Management, and create a baseline for that SQL statement. And finally, if you are in the process of upgrading from an older version of the database to 19C and your applications currently leverage hints, please take advantage of the hidden parameter underscore optimizer ignore hints in just one session, enable that, set it to true, test out your queries that are using hints today and see whether or not you actually get the same or better performance in 19C, because it may be time to remove those hints from your query and allow the optimizer to get you the best possible plan for those queries. Thanks so much for joining me today. You can get more information on optimizer hints on the optimizer blog at blogs.oracle.com slash optimizer, or on my blog at sqlmaria.com or on my YouTube channel, Maria Colgan 42. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.